thing that has breath. Praise ye the Lord. Why? Because he is good. His mercy endures to all generations. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You can do that in the audience here in person. You can do that wherever you are at, in your home, in your kitchen, in your car. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I need somebody to give God a praise in the building. Give God a praise in your home. Give God a praise wherever you are located. Why? Because he's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your glory. He's worthy of your hallelujah. It is the highest praise. Why? Because he woke us up this morning. Started us on our way. Gave us activity of limbs. Breath in our bodies. And we dare not take it for granted. Being able to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Can I get a witness in this place? All I need. I, in fact, I don't need nobody. I can praise him all by myself. Why? Because he's been just that good. He's been a way out of no way. A wheel in the middle of a wheel. God is a rock. He is a, a strong foundation. Yes, he is. And I'm so glad. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. We'll be glad to be here. In the house, in your house, in a virtual house, stand upon your feet and give God a praise. Stop what you're doing. Lift him up. Don't you take it for granted. Lift him up for all the world to see. Lift him up. Lift him up. Glory, glory, I don't know how you can just sit there and look at us. Oh my God, with the praise that's gone forth. And after all that you've been through, can I help you? He woke you up this morning, clothed you in your right mind, gave you activity of limbs, and he delivered you from what you don't know. He delivered you from that accident that you didn't see. He delivered you from the death angel that visited your house. He delivered. Hey, he delivered. Can I get a witness? That's why he de deserves my praise. He deserves my glory. He deserves your praise. He deserves your glory. He deserves your gifts, your tithes, and your offering. We're thankful for each and every one of you who have continuously give, give to this ministry. For 31 years, we have been able to serve not only this corner in Meadowview, not only the city of Sacramento, but yea, the world, the nation, and the world, planting churches, in Uganda, Africa, ministering across the globe. Even now, people are tuned in from all across the globe and we are grateful for this, this opportunity to say that we've been blessed to serve the nation, the globe for 31 years. Can you put your hands together? 31 years serving black excellence. In ministry, I said serving hashtag black excellence in ministry. I'm gonna say it for the third time for the Holy Ghost serving hashtag black excellence in ministry. We thank God for our founders, Dr. Robert Porter, Hazel Porter, and the Mighty 200. And we don't want to ever forget about their sacrifice and the foundation that they have established. We thank God for Pastor E. Ellington Porter and Lady Tawana Porter, who are now in Minnesota, who have helped, who helped bridge the gap, amen, continue to work for so long, 19 years, and continue to do so uh, in a different way, in a different manner. 
we thank God for them. We thank God for Lady Carlette, co-pastor Carlette Post Porter. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the first lady of this house. Amen. The thing is not robbery. Amen. To be a blessing to the house of the Lord all of these years. Amen. We thank God for all of you, charter and new, from our oldest member to our newest member. We thank God for you who, are, who have been, yes, clap your hands. Give, your, give yourself a hand. In a, in a time where bishop churches are dying by the thousands, they're dying by the thousands. They're dying by the thousands because they haven't been able to figure out how to operate within this new normal, this post, this beginning, beginning to go into a post pandemic. And, and it's not going to be like how it was before. I don't know if we're going to ever see a large, large crowd like we used to. It might have to be like this for a minute. Amen. But however it is that we can get the word out. How many know that God's word still stands? The Bible says, then Jesus looked unto Peter. He says, Peter, upon you I shall build my church. And the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Against it. And so with that, we know that the church will always win. The church will always adapt to no matter what circumstance or environment that we may face we find our face face facing it at, at the moment and so we're thankful for that today i want to go into the word before i do that i want to acknowledge all the april birthdays this is a special month not only for the church but so many amen amen we that, that have a celebrate a birthday our own e pastor aaron's gonna celebrate a birthday amen in april Praise the Lord. I heard about Mercedes. Amen. And Mimi, she has a birthday. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. She's in the house. Praise the Lord. How old are you now, baby girl? 13 years old. Somebody's getting old. Amen. I think it's my issue's getting old. Amen. It's not, who else got a birthday? Over here? How old, how, yeah, what's your name? Shout out. Help me. A sale, and how old are you, baby? 36. She said, I'm not a baby. I'm 36, y'all. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Have we ever done this in a minute? Come on. I just need somebody to help us to sing a little birthday song. Come on, Bishop. You got it. Come on. You at home, help us sing it. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. I said, happy birthday to you. Mimi, happy birthday. Here you go, come on. Happy birthday. That's it, come on. Happy birthday. You at home, come on. Happy birthday. I want to hear you sing it at home. Go on, happy birthday. That's a happy birthday, birthday. That's it, go on. Happy birthday. That's it. Happy birthday. Genesis. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday! Praise the Lord. Happy birthday to everyone. Amen. We cannot take these things for granted. Amen. 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 Turn with us to Nehemiah, the sixth chapter, verse one through four. Nehemiah, the sixth chapter, verse one through four. I do hope that you're um, riding this train with us through this month and as we prepare for our our social justice community um, conference, Rise Up Conference, that we are just excited. Everybody wants to part, be a part of the National Action Network Sacramento Rise Up Conference. Amen, that we are excited. We got some great sponsors that said, we don't want to prohibit no one from being able to participate in this. This is a, one of those once in a lifetime 
opportunity. You got some heavy hitters coming in, joining us. Reverend Sharpton, Martin Luther King III, Jamal Harrison Bryant, Benjamin Crump, Attorney Benjamin Crump, the new Secretary of State of California. Amen. Dr. Sheila Shirley Weber. Amen. My good friend, Congress Assembly Member uh, Mike Gibson and others, like Dr. Margaret Fortune, who's our conference coordinator. Also, we have uh, P.J. Morton coming, amen, for our youth huddle. And we join in, in, in with Pastor Stefan and, and, and Pastor um, uh, uh, Daryl Darryl Scarborough, amen, and others. We got a whole youth day, third day. And then on um, Wednesday, we're celebrating, honoring um, uh, Faith in Action honorees, my good friends, um, Bob, Bob Balian and Ephraim Smith, amen. The Clark family, praise God, amen. And others, like Rabbi David, Dale Scarborough, praise God, amen. Greg Clark, amen. Reverend Sharpton will be there. You, want, can, you have access to all of it now. Uh, if you just register, all you got to do is register. And where can you register? On the app, <laughs> on the app. Sack Genesis, amen. Look at it. It's in every Apple store, Google Play. App Store, amen, work it out, Amazon, download it today so you can be a part of that, amen. Now to the word of God, Nehemiah, the sixth chapter, verse one through four, and it reads us this, now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it. Though at the time I had not hung the doors in the gates. Then Sanballat and Geshem said to me saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. Verse 3 says, So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? while I leave it and go down to you. But they sent me this message four times, but I answered them in the same manner. Today we're going to speak from this topic, your work is too great. Your work is too great. Today, Lord, we just ask you to continue to do what you've done. Thank you for visiting us manifesting your presence lord speaking to us through song through ministry through testimony through music their god now lord speak to us allow us to hear what we need to hear speak to your church tell us about ourselves encourage us command us guide us right now through your holy word lord allow anything that's, that will stand in the way to be removed from your word so that your seed may fall onto fertile ground, fertile soil. For Lord, we want to please you during this season. We want to please you in everything that we do. So Lord, remove me, replace me with you, dear God, so that your word may come full of power and joy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Your work is too great. Amen. As we start this message, I look upon the audience and I look upon workers that have worked through this pandemic. Um, people that are, have unexpectedly came up and, and took the baton when others could not, Brother Bird, when when, when our senior saints were forced to quarantine and stay home, it, there were some millennials that used to sit in the back, now sit in front, that have stepped up to the plate and said, I will carry the baton, and I will keep it moving. Amen. When others were, 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 were fearful of, of stepping up on stage and, and going and ministering, we have those who are now here today have stepped on stage and said, we will do it. We will, we will trust in the Lord. And, and it was not without casualty. It was not without um, illness or sickness. But 
they trusted God anyways. We trust God anyways with the mandate and the ministry that is upon this church. I say that today um, to honor them because of the work that's on their lives. I honor their work, their labor. And I need you to help me to honor their labor on today. Through amen. Those who have ministered throughout the year of a pandemic. You ain't seen that before. That sang through a pandemic, that played through a pandemic, that preached through a pandemic. I say that because you are doing a great work. A great work, Kevin. A great work, Kalita. A great work. And what you sit in here right now, Genesis, is a great work. What you are viewing is a great work. Oh, and no matter what anybody else says, oh, this Genesis is great. <laughs> I need somebody here to acknowledge the greatness of God. Oh, man, because God has placed a large assignment we never knew back in 1990. We didn't know the type of work that was going to be upon us when Dr. Robert Porter uh, had a dream, had the inclination in the mighty 200. He and Sister Hazel Porter came in and said, let's start a church called Genesis, a new beginning for a people who have been punished uh, for wanting to be different. Uh, they wanted to, to, to give a little, be louder in their praise, be more demonstrative in their worship, and to believe that they can do better than what their forefathers and ancestors had done. Uh, they want to do a great work, a greater work, and here it is, through tests and trials. Oh, uh, through, through, through sickness and pain, um, through bankruptcy and foreclosure, uh, God has had his hand upon this work. People have come and people have gone. Uh, but look at your neighbor. It's a neighbor. We're still here. Oh, my God. We're still here. I need you to write it into the chat. Wherever you're looking at, we're still here. No matter what they say about us on the Facebook or Twitter, we're still here. Uh, still here doing what? A great work. Uh, doing great things uh, with great people. Who knew that, that, that in times to come there would be a new school uh, do, that's built during a pandemic? $12 million invested during a pandemic on a corner called, that's, that's dedicated to the Genesis Church. I need somebody here uh, to give God a praise for a great work. Uh, but my, we don't seek recognition from man. In fact, many times we get ridiculed from, what, from man and, and all of that. But we thank God that, that, his, that he is shining upon us. And we know that we are pleasing God because he continues to bless us. Oh, my God. And so we thank God for him, for us being able to please him and to continue to do this great work. And I want to tell those who have, have dug in and have prayed all through 31 years, have sold anything at any time in 31 years, that have blessed us in any way, in any capacity, member or not, um, in 31 years, we want to thank you for sowing into this great work into this great work here at the Genesis Missionary, we'll use our government name, Baptist Church Incorporated. Uh, it's a great work. And I'm telling you that God has honored your work. God has honored your seed. God has honored your sowing. And God has honored your prayers. And let me tell you right now, the way I know he's honored because we're still here. And we are better than how we started. I need someone here that can testify that the Genesis is better than how we started. Oh, uh, people tried to kill us, but we're better than how we started. Uh, people have tried to kill us off and, and dug us a, a grave, 
but we're better we, we, are, we are better than how we started people have tried to keep us to put roll the stone in front of a tomb and keep us in there but God rolled the stone away multiple times and we have experienced resurrection after resurrection after resurrection oh don't get me started oh God has blessed us why because we are in a great work and for those who have kept us kept on keep on blessing us and keep on sowing and keep on believing I'm here to let you know your labor is not in vain uh, because God said better is coming I need somebody in here that understands that you can't keep a good Genesis down better is coming better works and greater works better works and greater works going higher I need a witness and higher I need another witness and higher why because we were built for this we were built for this season we were built for this time and no weapon that is formed against us shall the shell box shall not pop. Turn to your neighbors and neighbor. We were built to get the job done. When Genesis, when God built Genesis, when God sent you to hear the Genesis, he sent the special people. People that know how to, to endure suffering. People that know how to endure ridicule. People that know how to endure criticism. People that know how to build and believe. Somebody shall I still believe. And because of you, because of you being here with us and being true to God, look around you. Look around you. We have gained ground. And we have reached places that no one thought we could reach. We have traversed to heights no one man thought that we could traverse to. Why? Because God has blessed this great work. It reminds me that God qualifies who he calls. Yes, For we did not come up the traditional way. But God said, because of your belief in your untraditional stance, I'm going to qualify you because I called you. And what I want to do in this short period of time is I want to encourage you, Genesis. I want to be selfish to everyone that is looking that has a stake, a stake within this ministry. I want to encourage you to know, to, die, to don't come off the wall. Keep rebuilding. Keep building up from where you are planted. For you are called to do this work. And the work is great. The work, Bishop, is great. The work is great. But the enemy is mad. The enemy does not like when people are, pers are, are per persevering, are tenacious and keep on going after it, even when they have everything to say to give up on it. So I want to warn you right now, as we move into the next 31 plus years, that the enemy is trying to do three things to us. He's trying to do three things to you. One is to destroy you, distract you, and divide you. He's trying to destroy us, distract us, and divide us. Let's go to our text where we see the walls of Jerusalem are torn down and the gates are burned down with fire. Not only was the city broken, but also the spirit of the people, the survivors of Babylon, the Israelites that came from being in exile, their spirits were broken. And many of our neighborhoods and communities, the world that we're living in, this is the same, they share the same testimony. For in many cases, the world has gone through 
this type of experience due to the pandemic, which calls a brokenness in us. We are broken by COVID. We are broken by being in solitude. We are broken by having to wear masks. We are broken, oh, broken, broken, broken by this pandemic. On top of that, as a nation waits for justice for George Floyd, in the closing days of the Chauvin murder trial, black and brown communities across the country are again consistently broken. We're standing on the urge, on the verge, uh, as we stand on the verge of, 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 of seeing what this work is going to be. And enduring this consistent stream of violence at the hands of police. Sunday night, just a few miles from where the trial is underway in our home state of Minneapolis, Minnesota, another police officer murdered 20-year-old Dante Wright. And the officer's excuse for 26 years, an experienced, experienced officer saying that she mistook the gun for a taser. And then just the other day, Traumatic footage was released of another police shooting victim in Chicago. Seventh grader Adam Toledo, who was unarmed with his hands in the air. Oh, black and brown communities are suffering um, because of police misconduct. Suffering because of voter suppression. And our, our walls are torn down. And our gates are burned with fire. And this is what, these are just a few of examples where, where the devil, the enemy is trying everything that he can to break us, to break our faith. If I can't break you through slavery, I'm going to break you through Jim Crow. If I can't break you through Jim Crow, I'm going to break you through 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 kkk if i can't break you through kkk i'm gonna break you in other ways and you suppress your votes i'm gonna tell you where to eat tell you where to drink tell you where to, where you can educate yourself but who, how many know that we serve a god who is able to keep us even when we're falling oh my god we thank god for the black church you know what? I'm 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 tired of of folks, you know, trying to change us and feeling the need to have to change who we are. Oh, God called me. I, I I just I just I just I go. I have to admit it. I just I just kind of figured it out. I'm here for certain people. I I just I, I, I I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm here for certain people. Uh, who would I be if I had grown up? I'm a third generation pastor that served black folks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All of our lives. And for us to try to change up and try to be something else. I'm a black man called to preach um, up to a black church, to a black people that we can rise up. It is not for us to try to change our ways for somebody else. But if you want to jump up and support somebody who is proud to be black and serving black excellence, then you can jump up on this bandwagon because I'm not jumping on no other bandwagon. I'm here for the people. I'm here for the people that can't cry out for, for themselves, that, can't, that can't, can't speak out for themselves. I'm here for the people. Somebody asked me, how you feeling, Pastor? Last week in the meeting, I said, I feel like Nehemiah. Building the wall. Trying to protect us in every way possible. Trying to protect our kids in every way possible. Why are you doing this? Why are you hanging out with Reverend Sharpton? Why are you working this out? Why are you becoming such an activist? Because a wall has to be built. 
Our gates need to be uh, rebuilt. Somebody needs to protect us. And nobody else is going to come and protect us but us. Nehemiah was a common man in a unique position. He was a cupbearer to the Persian king. Nehemiah has little power, but he has great influence because he's a tr- he is trusted by his king. Nehemiah was a Jew who had heard about the slow process of restoration happening in his homeland of Jerusalem. And you see in 596 B.C., Jerusalem was destroyed by the enemy, the Babylonians, and sent into exile. The first exiles returned back to Jerusalem in 538 B.C. and immediately started to rebuild the temple of God. To their credit, the Jews were able to successfully rebuild God's temple by 515 B.C., only 23 years later. However, the temple and the city were still vulnerable. Because the city walls and gates that remained in shambles for the next 70 years. So he asked his king permission to go and lead in the rebuilding efforts. For he understands this. And get this Genesis. When you rebuild walls, you rebuild lives. When you rebuild walls, you rebuild lives. And we all have the opportunity, Bishop, to be Nehemiahs in our own special way. In our homes, we can be a Nehemiah. In our churches, our jobs, our schools, we can be a Nehemiah. In our neighborhoods, our communities, our cities in which we live in, we all can be and tap in into our inner Nehemiah. But here's the warning. For when you tap into your inner Nehemiah, Genesis, I don't have to tell you that there are some folks that are standing around us that don't like seeing lives or places being rebuilt. And you see, the enemy wants you and I to stay captive even when we are no longer bound. The enemy wants you to stay in bondage, in prison to your circumstance and dismayed about your future. He wants us to carry a negative mental condition even when you are in a positive physical condition. The enemy wants you to act enslaved even though you've been freed and liberated from slavery. What I'm trying to tell you is that the enemy desires to destroy us. By taking away our hope. Because if he can take our hope away, he can take away our faith. For the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Therefore, if you have no hope, then you have no faith. And when there is no faith, There is no future. And all there is left is destruction. And this is what the enemy desires to do. He wants to destroy us. Destroy our faith. Destroy our dreams. Destroy our happiness. Destroy family and relationships. Destroy our money. Destroy us by taking away hope and evidently taking away our future. And the thing that we must guard ourselves, especially within this hour, don't distract them back there, is that while you, whatever you do, don't you allow no one to stop you from rebuilding walls, rebuilding lives, huh? rebuilding walls and rebuilding lives. Don't you let the enemy destroy you. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you let no one destroy you. Don't let no one destroy your dreams. Don't let no one destroy anything that that God has placed up before you. Uh, If the enemy cannot destroy you, then he will do all he can to distract you. Uh, He comes not only to destroy, but he also comes to distract you. 
from your assignment and from your purpose. James, you let him tell him that he got to go. Oh, praise the Lord. Read the text. It says, verse 2, then send Ballad and Geshem sent to me saying, come let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. In the text, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem sent an invitation to Nehemiah to come and meet with them, asking them to move away from their work in order to stop his progress. The reason why they are trying to distract you is because they know the value of your work. Most of the times, we get distracted because we don't recognize the value of our work. We don't understand how valuable we are. So we agree to the enemy's invitation because we believe that his invitation is more valuable than our assignments. And we can't allow the enemy's invitation uh, of distraction to devalue our work. I don't care how you feel. You need to know that if the enemy is trying to invite you away from your assignment, trying to distract you from completing it, sending people to, to dissuade you from doing it, then that your work is too important to quit. It's too important to stop. And it's too great to give up on why because it holds so much value. Turn to somebody and tell them, my work is valuable. Uh, don't get distracted. Why? Because your work is too valuable. It's too important to be distracted. And the invitation alone is a sign of how valuable your work is. Uh, you would have gotten the invitation. Uh, you will have gotten the, the, the temptation to be distracted if your work, if you wasn't doing anything, uh, if you weren't influencing somebody, if you weren't creating change. This is why the enemy is, is knocking on your door, trying to distract you with health challenges, trying to distract you in your money, trying to distract you in your mind, trying to distract you in your relationships. Why? Because your work is too great. Your work is too valuable. And if he can distract you, then he will, can possibly stop you from doing a great work. But I'm here to let you know, don't let nobody distract you from the work, distract you from your call, distract you from your purpose that God has given you, Kevin. Why? Because you are the answer to somebody's prayer you are your work is somebody's miracle your work is somebody's breakthrough somebody's going to be saved by your work and somebody's going to get what they need oh the most why through your work so turn to your neighbor and to neighbor give them a high five an air high five and say don't get distracted uh, don't get distracted by the enemy. Don't get distracted um, by man. Why? Because your work is too valuable. What you are doing right here and right now is too valuable. You are about to change somebody's life. For 31 years, we have been able to change the world because we didn't get distracted from the work for our work is too great I got one more for you the enemy is not only trying to destroy us he's not just trying to distract you but he's also trying to divide you divide us your biggest threat I think I touched on this a little bit last Sunday. Your biggest threat does not come from those on the outside of you. But your biggest threat comes from those who are the closest to you. Can I just be real with you? I don't worry about 
strangers and what they say. I don't lose sleep over strangers and what they talk about. Uh, but, what, but what concerns me, what troubles my spirit, Kalina, is when family talks about family. Uh, when people that you've been with for a long time all of a sudden turn on you for, for no good reason. Uh, you know, everything is not going to be great. But, 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 but if there's one thing that we should be able to agree upon is that we're family. And family is family, no matter what. I got no, no amens on that. But betrayal is not betrayal unless it's done by someone who is close to you. And the only thing that can stop you is those who are closest to you. This is why you have to watch out who you have in your circle. Because everybody that's by your side is not on your side. That's why you have to be choosy with your friends. Because your friendships affect your destiny. Good to great author Jim Collins says, uh, Bishop, you may have read the book. You need to make sure you have the right people on the bus as you travel on the road to becoming great. You have to have the right people on the bus as you travel on your road to becoming great. That means not everybody can be on your bus. You have to stop sometimes and, and let some folks out or they will cause division. Two is powerful when unified. The Bible says one can slay a thousand. While two can slay 10,000. However, however, it can be just as powerful negatively when they are not unified. Die vision. Opposing visions can ruin countries, governments, universities, churches, and families. And here's the thing you have to understand. If you're going to continue to win, we have to be together on this thing. Sometimes we will agree. Sometimes we will have to agree to disagree. But every time we have to move forward in agreement. If you can't agree to this, then get off the bus. There's some people that couldn't agree. To being agreeable during our 31 years. And so we had to, Bishop, let them off the bus. It's not that we don't no longer love you, but I here to fight you. Because I got devils to fight. I got giants to fight. I got principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places to fight. No sense of me fighting you. I need you to pray for me. I need you to fast for me. I, I need you to be able to fight with me than against me. If you can't be unified, get off the bus. For the, for the enemy is trying to stop this great work by destroying us uh, by distracting us and by dividing us. But in Nehemiah, he gives us instructions on how to not be destroyed, not be distracted, and not be divided. He says, when Sanballat and Geshem came to him saying, let's meet together, he saw through his discernment that they came to do him harm. And so he said to them through a messenger, I am doing a great work, so I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? 
They asked him four times, four more times, but he said he was consistent, Bishop, and he answered them in the same manner. That I, my work is too great for me to come down uh, off my wall. Uh, he says my work is great because of its value. It's great because it's making a statement all on its own. I can't meet with you because there is nothing to say louder than the volume of my completed work. If you look at the Bible and look up the Hebrew definition for great, the word great in Hebrew is the word gadaw, which means loud. The word gadaw means that what we are doing is a loud work. Uh, it's a loud work. It's not anthropomorphically gifted like a human. The work, the walls have no lips or mouth from which it to speak. But while it's not saying something, it's still saying something. You're going to catch it. The walls don't form lips and speak. But when you see them, it's still saying something. And Genesis, can I tell you that after 31 years, we are still saying something. Why? Because the work speaks for itself. When you pass by this corner, for the bird at 2801, Meadowview Road, because it's all one thing. Oh, we are still saying something. When you pass by the Dr. Robert Porter Center, we are still saying something. What are you saying? We are survivors. We are saying we are overcomers. What are you saying? We are winners. What are you saying? We are champions. What are you saying? That we are more, more than conquerors. Oh, and you just keep on going across the way and look at the Koi Porter College Prep um, you can see that we're still saying something uh, a fortune school we are more than just a church but we are king and queen makers we are building up the future we are legacy builders we are impacting not just black people but we're impacting uh, everybody red, yellow, black or white Everybody's precious uh, in our sight. Uh, uh, why are we still saying something? Because our work is too great. Uh, and Genesis, uh, I just came to serve notice uh, to you and to everybody watching that we're not done talking. We're not done speaking. Our work is too great. Our work won't be destroyed. And we won't be distracted. No, we'll be, we will be the, divided. Why? Because your work is too great. When you are doing your God assignment, you don't have to say a word. You don't have to tell nobody what you're doing because your work has volume. And I'm here to let you know uh, this work has volume. Oh, uh, why? Because the work will speak for itself. All we got to do is just keep on working. All we got to do is just keep on building. All we got to do is just keep on praising, keep on singing, keep on preaching, and let the work speak for itself. All we got to do is just keep on walking in our assignment and let the work speak for ourselves for itself uh, so Genesis uh, keep on working membership keep on working keep on praying Bishop keep on singing keep on preaching keep on building we got work to do uh, we're going to keep on building uh, until the Lord says so because nobody's going to stop us uh, from doing uh, this great work for the work is too great for us to stop now. And I'm here to let you know I'm committed to keep on working. 
But wherever God calls me, I'm going to do it. Whatever God says, we're going to accomplish it. Why? Because we're going to keep on building. For rebuilding walls means that we're going to build up lives. And we're committed to not just saving souls, but building lives. Building people. Building them in their education. Building them in their wealth. Building them in their health. Building them in their spirits. Build them in their careers. We're going to help them build up financially. Why? Because our work is too great. Our work is too great. And we can't come down. We won't come down from the wall. Because we still got work to do. If you believe that, we still got work to do. Type it in the chat. Shout it to your neighbor. We still got work to do. We still got mountains to climb. We still got skyscrapers to to go over. We still got work. There's still a work that we got to do. A work in Minneapolis. A work in St. Paul. A work in Texas. A work in Georgia. A work in Florida. A work in California. A work in Southern California. A work in the Bay Area. A work in China. A work in the African continent. A work. A work. A work. A work. A work. A work. So Jesus, be not weary in your well doing. But we're going to reap a harvest of blessings because of the work. The work speaks. The work lives. The work is loud. The work has volume. And we're going to keep on working. We're going to keep on talking. We're going to keep on singing. We're going to keep on preaching. We're going to keep on praying. We're going to keep on dancing. We're going to keep on praising. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Because I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. And I know. I know he will do it. He will work it out. Yes, he will. Give God a praise. Praise him in your home. Praise him on your child. Praise him. 